And we have motion. You see Dragon physically separating from the International Space Station, 1.32 a.m. Central Time, the International Space Station, 253 statue miles over Sedan. Copy. So there you can see on your screen visual confirmation. What a gorgeous shot. Uh, Dragon has Separation. undocked from the International Separation. Space Station, and we are beginning the departure. That's right, and you're going to hear the voice of David St. Jacques again. He's the one inside of the station monitoring Dragon Force departures, slowly backing away. Everything's looked good so far with those separation burns. Again, as Gary said, that physical separation, that undocking coming at 11.32 p.m. here mm -hmm. Pacific. Station Houston N2, Dragon departure burn zero complete. So you heard us mention earlier that we have a series of four departure burns, starting with zero, zero, one, two, three. Uh, we have confirmation that departure burn zero has been completed. That's right. And so with that one down, we're going to start seeing Dragon begin flying actually above the International Space Station. And then coming up in just a couple of minutes, departure burn one, the second departure burn, uh, will be coming. That should be in about four or five minutes from now. And so we're going to see Dragon just kind of swing its way over top of the space station and eventually fly out of both the keep-out sphere and the approach ellipsoid. And so the keep-out sphere is one of my favorite things. It's an imaginary sphere with about a 200-mile radius, so 200-meter 200, 200 radius. That would be a much bigger sphere. <laughs> a 200-meter radius in all directions. Um, and that just governs, so kind of like the approach ellipsoid, which I explained earlier, before you're in the keep-out sphere, any maneuvers with the spacecraft, I uh, have to be safe and Station not get the inside two, within five. four orbits. Dragon is in the corridor, and uh, opening rate is unexpected. Copy. And David St. Jacques reporting everything looking good so far. You heard him say the corridor, so they on their overlays that they have. Uh, on their laptops on board the station where they're actually monitoring Dragon. They're looking for any perturbations outside of the expected path. If they see anything that doesn't quite look right, again, they're in the loop and they can send commands, but everything going smoothly with Dragon slowly flying away. And this is kind of a, an animated representation of the kind of stuff that the crew is looking for. They have that corridor, so kind of that triangular shape you can see there, where they're just looking to make sure Dragon's pitch, yaw, approach, speeds, everything like that or inside of parameters as expected. Dragon continuing to fly free. Look, everything looking good so far. So just in case if you've in case you've just tuned in, we are currently watching Dragon as it departs from the International Space Station. It's been a really smooth operation so far with the undocking procedure, and now we're moving into departure. As of right now, you can see on your screen the Dragon capsule moving away from the approach ellipsoid. Uh, there we can see the nose cone still in its open position, uh, leaving the forward hatch exposed. We will be closing that prior to Dragon's re-entry. And so we're continuing to get really great views. Dragon backdrop by the inky blackness of space. You'll see the, the cameras are a little bit jerky in their, in their motions. They're actually being controlled by somebody on the ground in mission control. Uh, we always like to talk about how in Mission Control over in Houston, that's where they actually fly the space station. That's where they control everything from the cameras and the communication to even the thermostat on board the space station. If it's too hot for the crew, they talk to the ground, and they're the ones who can turn the AC up. But, uh, so it's actually somebody at a console right now who's controlling those cameras, sending commands just to move all the pan tilt, 
focus everything else. They're doing it from a console on Earth while the thing is flying 250 statue miles over the Earth on the other side of the planet. It's like Dan mentioned before, uh, we're going really fast right now. Um, we're at about 17 and a half thousand miles per hour, so everything is moving very quickly. The need to readjust the cameras very frequently is inherent due to the high velocities that we're dealing with. And so this is a view from that WB-57 airplane. You were looking at dragons streaking across the sky on its re-entry through the Earth's atmosphere, aiming for a splashdown in just a little while from now. So it's pretty exciting that we get this shot right now as it is our first view from planet Earth of the Dragon capsule since it lifted off from Cape Canaveral uh, just several days ago. I will say this is this is a pretty rare treat to be able to see this here. And again, this this video is coming from a NASA airplane that uh, we're flying around that recovery zone there, a WB-57. It's commonly used for a lot of atmospheric studies and other mm -hmm. science missions, uh, but able to put a tracking camera on it to try and get uh, this uh, re-entry through the Earth's atmosphere today. We're hearing that they should have AOSO acquisition, acquisition of signal back with the Dragon spacecraft. Right now it's about 46 kilometers in altitude. The Dragon spacecraft continuing to descend. It's now subsonic, so already starting to slow down thanks to the error braking, basically slamming into that Earth's atmosphere, causes a lot of friction and allows the vehicle to eventually reach its terminal velocity, basically. Uh, and then those parachutes are gonna kick in. So there you have visual confirmation of the deployment of our drogue parachutes. This is the first of two parachute deployments. And so those drogue chutes do the initial slowing and then they're ultimately going to pull out the four main parachutes responsible for really slowing the spacecraft down prior to that flashing. You can hear cheering here at SpaceX headquarters as the employees that have gathered around our mission control center are sharing the same view as you. Uh, what a gorgeous shot of Dragon coming back down. decelerating the Dragon vehicle down to the Atlantic Ocean. Really can't ask for a more picture-perfect <laughs> shot than that. And yes, all, all four shoots now deployed. It's going to continue to descend. It's going to continue to slow down and then ultimately splash down in the Atlantic there. We're now under a kilometer in altitude. Just about 750 meters to go. In case if you're just joining us, you can see on your screen there, Dragon re-entering, has just re-entered the Earth's atmosphere after departing from the International Space Station. We have a gorgeous shot of four healthy parachutes um, deployed and slowing the vehicle down as it is approaching the surface of the Atlantic Ocean uh, off the coast of Florida. And it's continuing to descend under those chutes. We just passed 500 meters. Everything continuing to look good via reports to all the flight control teams. Now we're at about 400 meters. And 
And just passing 300 meters, continuing to descend. We might be right on time. We were planning on splashing down at about 5.45 a.m. Pacific, and we're getting real close to that bingo time. Just past 200 meters. And we have confirmation that Dragon is now under 100 meters, uh, is 100 meters above the, the surface of the ocean. So next up, spin, standing by for splashdown. now in recovery. That splashdown came right on time, 5.45 a.m. Pacific, 8.45 a.m. over on the East Coast. The teams that have been ready and waiting, they were staged just a few nautical miles away. They're going to start moving in now. You can see those two fast approach boats already speeding their way towards the capsule. Right now, we're just waiting for Dragon to lift up and out of the water and into the nest. And there it goes. <laughs> so there facing us is what we call the side hatch. And that is where, as Dan just mentioned, the astronauts would, if we had astronauts on board today, where they would be exiting. Um, the top hatch is what we use to connect to the ISS. And that is currently hidden underneath the nose cone. Um, but like we said, astronauts will be coming out of the side hatch. Um, yeah, and we got a beautiful shot there. Now the hydraulic lift is coming back, uh, back towards us um, and it is preparing to lower the Dragon capsule into its nest. Like we said, we are treating this demonstration mission um, with the recovery operations as if there were actual astronauts on board. Uh, and of course, before we were able, would be able to open the hatch, we would have to make sure that the spacecraft's cabin pressure is equalized with the outside environment before doing so. Uh, so once Dragon is seated, and you can hear some cheers behind me uh, as the remaining folks that we have here on the SpaceX team outside of mission control uh, are cheering with the placement of Dragon into the nest there, as you can see. 